Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to tonight's Prep House Drama competition. The theme for all of tonight's performances is Tales of the Unexpected. Each house will present an original piece of theatre based on ideas and characters that the staff and performers have come up with themselves. The boys have been working very hard and on behalf of everyone performing tonight, we hope you enjoy the evening. Firstly, each performance will last between 15 to 20 minutes. And following the first two performances, there will be a 15 minute interval, after which there will be another two performances. Secondly, please could you ensure that all your mobile phones are switched off. The evening is being filmed, so you can relive your son's performance on YouTube. <laughs> Finally, I would love to welcome tonight's guest judge, Miss <coughs> Alice Warner. Alice is an alumni of Dame Alice School, now Bedford Girls School, and she works in television production. It will be fantastic to have her decision on tonight's performances, and we wish her all the best as she makes her decisions later on. Alice will be choosing the Best Acting Award and the Overall House winner. Now. Our first performance tonight is by Bunyan, called The Unheard. Good luck, Bunyan. more of this. I must rest. Like I say, it was a nice place. children is how the earth and all living things were created by the hands of the Lord Almighty. But sir, what about that man Darwin, sir? You have been told many times, Alfred, do not shout out. But sir, Mr. Darwin found some things called fossils and says they prove evolution and so it might not have been God at all. Are you being Blasphemous, Alfred. Three strikes for calling out and four more for blasphemy. Come to the front. Some children shouldn't be taught to read. <laughs> it gives them too many ideas. Hold out your hand. Let this be a lesson to all of you. 
children should be seen and not heard. Shout, I can't even cry. Little ones are coming by. Looking in windows, knocking on doors. They need to take them and they might take yours. Can't call to mum, can't say a word. We're gonna leave screaming and you won't be heard. I should think so. Good night. Can't even shout, can't even cry. Little ones are coming by. Looking in windows, knocking on doors. They need to take them and they might take yours. Can't call to mum, can't say a word. We're going to leave screaming and you won't be heard. Come on, let's go. What should we play today then? Catch. Uh, let's do catch again. Okay. Did you hear? Can I play? You? This is a game for three players only. Why should we let you play anyway?
children were all in your class at the school. Have you any knowledge of where these children may have gone? I'm sure I don't know. Although they were the most troublesome children. They're probably just playing a silly game. A ruse to worry you all. Thomas would never do that. He'd never scare me like this. I miss the sound of his voice. Well, yes, calm down. We must have calm. We need volunteers to go to the woods tonight. Remain vigilant. We cannot lose another child. We must discover who is responsible for this. Sorry, school's not on today. What are you doing? Um, sir? That's how it happened. Soon, it started to spread across villages, and people learned to stay away in the town of No Noise. I knew you would come.
Now Whitbread will be performing the clearing. Go Whitbread! <laughs> Mum was upstairs putting my sister in the bath. 
hid in the bathroom singing that silly song my sister always sings about toes and cabbages. And I just stood there by the grave. The black plastic bag was still visible. So I got down with my hands and knees and reached out. Put my hand down to the back. He was still there. He hadn't gone anywhere. He had just stopped living. Hey, mister! Wake up! Hey, mister! Hey, come on, help me! <laughs> well, is he dead? I think so. Mr. Jackson, <laughs> a dead man, <laughs> ashes to ashes, dust to dust, may he rest in peace forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's really obvious that that is a dead body. <laughs>
Now our third performance tonight is by Howard, performing The Phantom School. Good luck. Thank 
attention. This is your final warning. Put an end to that daydreaming, or it's the cane for you, my lad. to get to last night then mate. Got lucky did ya? Here, take a look at this. He looks like death. Pain is dead I'd say. So where did you end up then? You never came back to the bunkhouse after the shift. Spill your guts then mate. Found a school. A what? School. Mizzle place it was. Filthy as muck and full of ash. Be it was a roof for the night. School? What are you doing in a school? Bet you ain't never been one of those in your life. Strangest thing though. What's that then? Full of littlings it was. What? At night? Get away with you. God's truth. Littlings walk into lessons. These are strange times we live in, mate. <coughs> Very strange times. I knew the other day. So what are you going to do then? Where are you figure on staying tonight? You ain't got no works. You ain't got no board. I don't know. I'll look down at the docks, I suppose. No stop there's work to be had there. Good luck to you, mate. doing cocker. <laughs> <laughs>
Whoa, look what the cat dragged in. You still about, mate? Thought you'd scarf, but what's the matter? Cat got your tongue? That's school. School. You ain't still laughing about that, is ya? I can't for the life of me understand what those little ones are doing in there. Ain't they got no homes to go to? These are strange times we live in, mate. Very strange times. Only the other day. So how'd you get on then? <laughs> what was you going to say just then, mate? Well, only the other day, I heard from a fella down Pound Street that they found a bunch of urchins locked down in the cellar. They'd been there for weeks, they figured. Nasty business. This world ain't no place for little ones, I reckon. There you go, mate. They're probably hiding out that school of yours. A safe place, like. But there was a master with them. A mean fella with a cane. Leave it be. Just leave it be. You've got your own problems to worry about. He's right, mate. We don't want to get mixed up in any business like that. But what if I'm the only one who can help them? Hearken to him, regular saviour of the people. <laughs> Governor, you work here, do you? Work here? What are you on about, mister? This school. Are you the caretaker then? Are you having a laugh? Ain't no school here no more. <coughs> I was here yesterday. Full of little ones it was. Wretched urchins. <coughs> on a can of them, I'm locking this place up. Keep getting in, they do. It's not safe no more. They want to tear this place out. Best for everyone. Here, you ain't been sleeping here, have you? I want the police on you. No, there was a there was a master with them. Mean fellow with a cane. Look, mate. I don't know what your game is, but I'd clear up if I were you. Ain't been no school here now for a dozen years or so. Not since the old place burned down. A fire. Good. You can hear <coughs> just fine then. That's right. Fire. Big blazer it was. Terrible business. Someone thought it was a good idea to keep them off the streets by locking them in during school hours. You mean they was all trapped inside? That's right. They all perish. Poor little bleeders. But what about the little ones in here last night?
Edward. What? Yes, sir. Harry. Yes, sir. Freddie. Yes, sir. Oliver. Yes, sir. Rich. Yes, sir. Amar. Yes, sir. JD. Morning, yo. <laughs> Alex. Yes, sir. Mackenzie. Yes, sir. A bloomy or decaying setting. I thought that was just tea, sir. My dad says my teeth would cake if I don't stop eating too many jelly beans. There are always teeth in the Gothic story. No, Simon. Decaying is something falling apart or rotting. A bit like your brain and something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. You can carry on reading number two. Supernatural beings or monsters. Good. Can anyone think of any famous gothic monsters? Jacob's mum! <laughs> <laughs>
to look at it. It's just an ordinary little paw. Dried to a little mummy. <laughs> oh! And what's so special about it? It had a spell put on it by an old Indian man, a very holy gentleman. He wanted to show that fate rules people's lives, and those who interfered with it did so to their sorrow. He put a spell on it so that three separate men could each have three wishes for it. Well, why haven't you used it yet? I have. And did you really have the three wishes granted? I did. Has anybody else wished yet? There's only been one other. I'm the second. The first man had his three wishes, yes. I'm not sure what the first two were. But the third was for death. That's how I got it. Cool! Well, if you've had your three wishes, why do you still keep it? Not sure, really. I did have some idea of selling it. But I don't think I will. It's caused enough trouble already. Besides, people won't buy it. They think it's a fairy tale. If you could have another three wishes, would you have them? I don't know. I just don't know.
Okay, 30 seconds to look down the list and decide which features we've come across so far. Wish. We'll wish our boy a 
Peter, they must be mad. He should not have done that. Well, there's the high emotion. She was ever so slightly distressed too. Typical woman. <laughs> Let's read on. He sat until he was chilled with cold, glancing occasionally at the figure of his wife, staring out the window. The candle, which had almost burnt out, was throwing pulsating shadows on the ceilings and walls. Father, with an unspeakable sense of failure, crept back into bed, slowly followed by his wife. Neither spoke, but placed silently listening to the ticking of the clock. The darkness was oppressive, the silence deafening. After crossing and tossing and turning for a while, he jumped out of bed and sat looking into his, into his wife's mirror, wondering when he had become such a fool. When suddenly... What's that? A rat, I'm sure I heard one earlier too. It's Herbert! It's Herbert! Oh, for God's sake, woman, don't be a fool! Out of my way! That's my son! That's my boy! Don't do it! Don't do it! What will happen? I can't lose you as well! Children, what happens next? 300 words using the Gothic features we have discussed to write the next part of this gruesome tale. Due in on Monday, please. But, but sir, can't we just read a bit more? I reckon it's only Morris. Maybe he forgot his wallet. Oh no. There's definitely a mantle to fall. That'll be 400 words for you then, Sean. Oh, but sir, I was just... Have a good weekend, everyone. Uh The Listeners by Walter Delamere. Is anybody there? said the traveller, knocking on the moonlit door, and his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's ferny floor. And a bird flew up out of the turret. A 
above the traveller's head. And he smote upon the door again, a second time. Is there anybody there? He said. But no one descended to the traveller. No head from the leaf rimmed sill leaned over and looked into his grey eye, where he stood perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men stood thronging the faint moonbeams in the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall, hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveller's call. And he felt in his heart their strangeness, their stillness, answering his cry while his horse moved, cropping the dark turf, neath the starred and leafy sky. For he suddenly smote on the door, even louder, and lifted his head. Tell them that I came, and no one answered, that I kept my word, he said. Never the least stir made the listeners, though every word he spake fell echoing through the shadowiness of the still house from the one man left awake. Aye, they heard his foot upon the stirrup and the sound of iron on stone and how the silence sewed softly backwards when the plunging hooves were gone. this place tomorrow or the next day. You, if you are lucky, will neither hear nor see nor know of anything to do with that damned place again. The rest of us have to stay. We've to live with it. With whatever will surely follow, sometime or other. Crith and Gifford has lived with that for 50 years. It's changed people. You found that out. Those who have suffered worse, say least. Jerome, Keckwick. Janet Humphrey gave up her child, the boy, to her sister, Alice Travel, and Alice's husband, because she'd no choice. At first, she stayed away, hundreds of miles away. But in the end, the pain of being parted from him, instead of easing, grew worse, and she returned to Corinthian. She got rooms in the town. She'd no money. She took in sewing and acted as a companion to a lady. But first, <coughs> Alice would not let her see the boy, but Janet was so distressed, she threatened violence. And in the end, the sister relented. Just so far. Janet was allowed to visit very occasionally, but never disclose who she was or ever say anything about the relationship between him and her. No one ever foresaw that he'd turn out to look so like her, nor that the natural affinity between them would grow out. He became more and more attached to her, and as he did so, he became colder to Alice Trapper. Janet planned to take him away. That much I do know. But before she could, the accident happened. Just as you heard. The boy, the nursemaid, pony, trap, and its driver, Keckwick's father. That's a treacherous place, as you found out to your cost. The sea threat 
sweeps over the marshes suddenly. The quicksands are hidden. And Jenny was at the house, watching from an upper window, waiting for them to return. They recovered the bodies, but left the pony in trap, stuck too fast in the mud. From that day on, Janet Humphrey began to go mad. Mad with grief and mad with anger and a desire for revenge. She blamed her sister for letting them go out that day, though it was nobody's fault. The mist comes without warning, out of a clear sky. Whether because of her madness or her grief or what, Janet also contracted a disease that caused her to begin to waste away. Children were terrified of her. She died, eventually. And as soon as ever she died, the hauntings began. Wherever she has been seen, whether in the graveyard, the marshes, or the streets of the town, whoever by, and however briefly, there has been one sure and certain result. In some violent or dreadful way, a child has died. Thank you, Sam. And thank you to you both for wonderful performances. So now, I would like to welcome tonight's judge, Miss Alice Warner, to the stage.
switched on throughout and was reacting very well the whole time. You never, never switched off. And uh, the uh, winner of uh, your house drama is Howard. Yeah.